SIFS is the Common Internet File System. It's a stateful protocol which maintains a session between client and server. A controller failover will break that session unless the continuous availability feature is used. That became available in SMB version 3.0 and it's supported on Microsoft Hyper-V clients. NFS, on the other hand, does not maintain a session between the client and the server, which will be broken by a controller failover. SMB version 1.0, 2.x and 3.0 support are enabled by default in Data ONTAP. So let's talk about the different enhancements that came out with the different versions. SMB version 2.0 was released with Windows Vista. Improvements that it has over version 1 are larger reads and writes and compounding of requests, meaning it can send multiple requests in the same message. So because of these two things, it's got less overhead, so this gives us more efficient network use. It also has file property and directory property caching, durable file handles, meaning clients can open a file and survive a temporary connection loss, and it supports HMAC SHA-256 signing for enhanced security. SMB version 2.1 came out with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. It has improvements over version 2.0 of client opportunistic locks, op locks. This is client-side caching, so the client can cache information that it retains from the server. It gives better performance. It also supports a larger MTU maximum transmission unit sizes as well. SMB version 3.0 was released with Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012. The improvements we get with it are continuous availability. It can survive disruptive events such as failover and give back. This is the improvement that means it can survive failovers on our NetApp systems. It also supports persistent handles where it can survive a brief network outage without the need to construct a new session. Remote volume shadow copy services that enables backup services like NetApp Snap Manager to create application consistent shadow copies. We'll talk about Snap Manager in a later lesson. Other improvements that it has are the witness protocol. This gives faster failover by notifying servers when a node is unavailable without waiting to need for the SMB connection to time out. ODX copy offload. This enables direct data transfers without transferring the data through the host computer. The benefit that we get from this, let's say that our NetApp system is in New York and we have clients in Washington. Well, normally if we had a client in Washington that copied data on the NetApp system from one folder onto another folder, that data would actually go from New York down to the client in Washington and then back up to the NetApp system in New York again. With ODX copy offload, it doesn't have to go over the WAN connection and then back up again. It can stay local in New York. So this gives us faster copies. And the last one we're covering here is Branch Cache version 2. This is remote branch data caching on a dedicated remote Windows server or distributed over remote Windows clients. So let's say we've got that same situation with New York and Washington again, where we've got our NetApp system in New York and our clients in Washington. With branch cache, we can put a Windows server in Washington that is used for this. And now what happens is whenever a client gets a file from our NetApp system in New York, it will be cached on on that server in Washington. And then if another client goes to get the file, it can fetch it from the local server in Washington rather than having to go over the wide area network link to New York. So this gives us better performance. SMB version 3.1 was released with Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016. It has security enhancements over previous versions. Okay, that was the version information. Let's quickly review the NAS implementation on NetApp. You've seen this information before. NFS and SIFS are configured on a per SVM basis. NFS and SIFS are configured independently of each other 
and they could be enabled on separate SVMs, we can also enable them on the same SVM as well. Each SVM appears as a separate storage system to clients. The scope of a SIF service is a data SVM. So if you've got different SVMs and they've got SIFs configured on each of them, they're each separate independent SIFs configurations. Each data SVM can have a single SIF service. So if you wanted to integrate with two different Active Directory domains, then you would use two different SVMs. The SVM is joined to an Active Directory domain, or we can use local user accounts on the NetApp system. For scalability, almost always we would use an external Active Directory domain. Different SVMs can use different DNS servers and Active Directory domains. The SVM can use local user accounts, NTLM, that's NTLAN manager, or Kerberos to authenticate users. NTLM is a legacy authentication method which was mainly used in Windows 2000 and earlier. However, modern versions of Windows do still have backwards compatibility with it. Really importantly, by default, Kerberos allows the clocks of participating hosts to be no more than five minutes apart. And Active Directory uses Kerberos as its authentication method. This means that if the clock on your client is more than five minutes out than the clock on the NetApp system, it's not going to be able to access data. What you'll get is a permission denied message, and it looks like the user's entered a wrong username or password. But if the clock's more than five minutes out, even if they do enter the correct credentials, they're going to get that permission de denied message. And this can be really confusing if you're troubleshooting. So first thing to remember, when you're doing the configuration in any kind of troubleshooting, make sure that the clock on your domain controller and the NetApp system is set to the same time. It can't be more than five minutes out. PCs in the domain will receive their time from the domain controller by default. So use NTP, the network time protocol, to make sure that your NetApp system and your Active Directory domain controllers have the same time. The SVM joins the domain and it acts like a traditional Windows file server. And just like on a traditional Windows file server, clients must pass share and permission security to access data. So just standard Windows access rights. Shares and their security can be configured from the NetApp command line, from System Manager, or from Windows MMC, the Microsoft Management Console. The NetApp system, it shows up as a member server in the Windows domain, so we can use our normal Windows domain tools to configure it, such as the Windows MMC. Folder and file permissions are managed via the MMC or group policy. So share permissions can be managed from the NetApp system. Folder and file permissions are managed from your Windows clients. By default, export policies do not apply to SIF shares. So export policies, they're always applied, they're mandatory for NFS exports, but for SIF shares, they are optional and they are turned off by default. Export rules, if you enable them, provide another layer of access security in addition to share and file access permissions. They don't replace the share and file access permissions, they work in addition to them. Export rules apply to the client machine IP address, not to the Windows user and group. And the command to turn this on is vServer SIFS options modify your vServer and then is export policy enabled true. So this can be enabled or disabled at the SVM level. Share permissions can allow users to view shared folders or files no matter whether the users have access to them. This poses a security risk. Maybe we don't want users seeing folders that they don't have access to because maybe just having the name of that folder could have sensitive information. Administrators can protect the sensitive information using the access-based enumeration ABE option. When ABE is enabled on a SIF share, resources are not visible to users unless they have access permission to that resource. So say that we've got a volume 
called volume one and we've got folders in there called folder a folder b and folder top secret well if abe is not enabled then everybody that has access to that volume will see all three folders even if they don't have any rights to the top secret folder if we do enable abe a normal user that has got access to folder one and two will just see folder one and two they won't even see that the top secret folder exists the command to turn this on is vserver sif share properties add the vserver name and then the share name and then share properties access based enumeration so this can be enabled or disabled at the share level and remember it's disabled by default last thing to tell you about here is windows home directories you can use home directory functionality to automatically offer users a dynamic share to their home directory without creating an individual share for each user you can configure a single share with a few home directory parameters to define a user's relationship between the share and their home directory. So we have this for convenience. You're still going to create the folder for the user's home directory, but by using the NetApp home directories feature, it saves you having to individually configure a share for all of them. We can configure the Windows home directory feature, say what the containing folder is for all of the home folders, and use some wildcards, then any folders in there that match a wildcard will be automatically shared out. The wildcards that we can use are percentage %W, which is the user's Windows username, percentage %D is the domain name, and percentage %U is the user's mapped Unix username. By far the most commonly used wildcard is percentage %W. By default, when you set this up, a user's home directory can be accessed only by that user and by Windows administrators. This is typically what we want to happen, so that's usually fine. If you do want to change this, then you can do that as well. For the Windows home directories and the way that the wildcards work, the easiest way to understand this is by seeing it in the lab. So I'll give you a demo of this.